Today, the scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 12. As he walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's face, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am that man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme today, the light. The light. One week ago today, an Asian male college student human being wrote these words. I was on my way to dinner yesterday with another Asian person and we were yelled at because we have the coronavirus. Luckily, we got off the train immediately and were not physically harmed. Just because you're scared doesn't give you the right to target Asian people. This situation has happened to me multiple times over the past few weeks. We're all in this together and there is no good reason to make people feel more unsafe. It just doesn't help our community or our society. Wow, I guess that would explain everything. If it were not for the Asians, we could all be living a wonderful life, virus free. Why not put the blame on them for this horrific pandemic and lay it right there at the feet of China? and all other Asians. This week, I finished reading the book Unfollow. Unfollow is a book, a memoir, that's written by Megan Phelps Roper. Megan Phelps Roper grew up at Westboro Baptist Church. She was not only a part of the, the movement, she was a central part. She was not only a central part, but if you look at videos and tapes, you will often see Megan Phelps center and up front. She worked hard. She was part of a movement that would tout and go all over the United States in their cars from Topeka, Kansas, driving, just so they could arrive with their signs, God hates fags, and just so that they could show up at military funerals. Protesting that people had lost their kids because God was mad at America. 
among other things, they were led by her grandfather, who is now deceased, to tell the truth. They believe our soldiers are dying in battle because God is angry, and they would be really, really happy right now because God is surely angry, and God is not happy with us right now. And until we repent, according to them, more people are going to die. Maybe not as extreme, but a lot of folks believe this. They believe that God is intervening. There are all kinds of conspiracy theorists out there, and I've heard opinions that range from it's prophesied in the Bible, we're living the last days, all the way to this virus was intentionally shared so that we can reduce the population. It seems like it's in our DNA to need to blame somebody or something for the virus, including our president. Did he say the Chinese virus? Can someone please take the mic from the man? Oprah, in her interview this week with Idris, says, we all lose if we just think of this as a physical virus. It is here, this virus, to teach us and show us something about ourselves as individuals and also as a world of people. It helps humans to make sense of their world by finding somebody or someone's or situations or systems or spirits to blame so that we can feel better. Who do we blame for this pandemic? Who do you blame for this pandemic? Go ahead, put it out there, because most of the arguments have a similar stream of similarity. We enter the biblical text today to find a man who is born blind. Jesus spots him right away and says, that man is blind. His sensitivity may have been heightened, but somehow something about the man relayed to him that this man was blind. This blindness that this man was born with impacted his life. We know this by the labeling of him as a beggar. Today, we would see him sitting in front of Walgreens, maybe with a sign someone had written, with a bucket for change, with the gravity of his head, leaning him downward, asking, do you have a little change to spare? And we often walk on by. We try to avoid such people. We sometimes even make disparaging comments and blame the person. Why don't they just get a job? We dismiss them and we go on with our lives. We blame them. We're not so very different from our biblical ancestors because they haven't taken two steps. And the disciples turn to Jesus and say, so who messed up? Who mucked up? Whose fault is it? Is it the mom? Is it the dad? Is it the man born blind? Who messed up? Who jacked this situation up? Who is to blame? Who screwed up things? Was the kid a mess up? Don't you want to know who is to blame? And the good news here is, and I hope you get it, Jesus looks at the disciples and says, no one is to blame. No one messed up. Now I wanted you to just sit here a minute and to sit with that. Nobody messed up. It's not anyone's fault. What would our world look like if we didn't have this need to blame? What would the world look like? if We didn't have the need to say, hey, is it the dad's fault? Is it the mom? Is it the son's fault? How might the Asian college student feel when he stepped out of his doors if we didn't have the need to blame? What about the families grieving the loss of their child being killed in war and having the Westboro Baptist Church show up with signs saying because of their sin of the parents, your child was killed in war? What would it look like if gay people and trans people in the height of the AIDS epidemic who were socially isolated to an island by themselves, what would it look like if 
we didn't need to find blame and put it at the victim's feet. If we dropped our arsenal family size of blame, how might we have treated the Muslims differently after 9-11? Or people displaced by hurricanes and tornadoes and storms? Or the Latin Americans coming across the border post-Trump election? You know what I hear? And it's good news. Jesus declaring to his own disciples, no one is to blame. In this biblical story is a human being who cannot see and ain't no one to blame. Jesus had already figured out that the man was blind. He was actually born into a situation. We are generally gifted with five senses to touch, to feel, to taste, to hear, and to see. Behold. And this person couldn't behold. He couldn't see. He could not get around on his own. He could not be dependent of others. I mean, he could not be dependent himself. He was dependent on others. He was seeing impaired, which is ironic right now, because honestly, I don't know if we can see. I mean, none of us can really see the future future. But right now, we can't even see the future. The coronavirus in weeks has ripped across our global world. We were blinded to the seriousness of this virus weeks ago, and now we cannot even see how it will impact us. There's one thing for certain, fanatics and cynics, believers and non-believers, lovers and haters, we don't know. We are blind. And in a spirit of humility, admitting we are blind is not a bad place to start. The text today says, Jesus is our light. I'm asking you to look beyond your own blindness in everything you've been taught today, to dig deeper and expand your arms and your hearts far and to reach for the light. Years ago, I went on a treat with some urban sisters. There seems to be some rhyme or reason that you have to go far out to a rural area to relax, to release, and to kind of just let the cares of the world go. So on a Friday evening, after we got off from work, we got in our cars and we started making our way to this retreat center. It was in the winter and so the days were shorter and so as we were driving, it was getting darker and darker outside. By the time we arrived for dinner, it was dark. I mean, not just dark, but like dark, dark. But it was a different dark from living in the city with the lights filtering. One sister said, I'm going to need some lights because it's way too dark up here for me. She felt uncomfortable, surrounded by blackness, the blackness of the light with no, the blackness of the night with no light to penetrate or shatter the power of night, to shatter the power of darkness. I think these words sound appropriate for us today. It's dark up in here, and I'm going to need some light. I'm going to need to pray because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to dust the Bible off, take it off from the shelf. Wait a minute. First, I'm going to need to find the Bible because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to get my praise on because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to connect with other family members and friends because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to connect with whoever, because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to reach out to those who are most vulnerable by giving them a call and checking in on them. Because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to get on Instagram next Saturday and join the social distance party with DJ Nice, because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need you to anchor yourself in the light. There's enough darkness and enough blame, but what is needed in this moment is light. There will be more 
our darkness, but by extension and relationship with our God, I'm gonna need you to be the light. In the words of Michelle Obama, I'm gonna need you to go real high. I'm gonna need my young people to think beyond themselves and remember your choices impact others. I'm gonna need you to pray for those who do have to work and are on the front line. I'm gonna need you to have to embrace the light and hope and love for all of our siblings all over the world by making good choices. I'm gonna need y'all to stay in the house, recognizing our choices have a global impact. I'm gonna need you to embrace the love of God and let it pour out of you. I'm gonna need you to be the light. How many of you have said, if I had just a little bit more time, I could complete that project? Well, that time has arrived. Some of you said, if I just had a little bit more time, I'd spend some quality time with my kids and my family. I'm gonna need you to spend some quality time with your kids and your family. I'm gonna need us to reach back to what we learned in kindergarten and what we know to be true today. Some of you said, man, if I had more time, I'd read my Bible. Y'all can get through the whole Bible now, you got the time. You have the time to tackle the project. You have the time to spend with family. You have the time to pray. You have the time to be thoughtful. You have the time to care about somebody else. You have the time to do something special for somebody else. You have the time in this season of Lent when we encourage you to get closer to God. You have that time to get closer to God. Hallelujah. This man was born blind. He had a medical condition, and because he could not see, he could not work, and because he could not work, he was destitute. They labeled him a beggar. That was in the days when we weren't politically correct, so they just call it what it was, a beggar. And yet none of his situations were his fault. Sometimes stuff happened, and it just ain't nobody's fault. And yet with all the misfortune that had come his way, on this day he would be exposed to the light. And he would see what he had not seen because he was blind and he couldn't see. May we, America, and Italy, and China, and the whole world put down our weapons long enough to see what we can't see. The light has come to show us we are inextricably connected to one another. If we've never understood how connected we are to one another, look at how this virus traveled. It traveled through connections. The light has also come to show us our blindness. The light comes to help us see also that we haven't seen before. We haven't seen before what we can be seen, what we can be shown now because our eyes have been open to the light. Amen. Let us pray. In your homes, alone or with others, think about the blessings that surround you. In this moment, when it seems so dark, extend yourself toward the light. May you not only reach toward the light, but may you by contact become the light. And may we be a light in a very dark time. Amen.